You listen to the Schleg Daddy, you can make them stars. You don't listen to the Schleg Daddy, they'll be irrelevant and future endeavored in no time. I would hope after eight plus years of doing this, I've established enough credibility via results that that saying is true. It's not every single time, but the majority of the time when it comes to WWE, it most certainly is. You listen to me, you can make them stars. You listen to me, you can do interesting, compelling things with them. You don't listen to me, you end up screwing up. You don't listen to me, Fans for years will be talking about the missed opportunities. Hashtag worst writing ever. Hashtag worst wrestling ever. Hashtag WWE ruins everything. There were two big things I've talked about with Becky Lynch. Number one, that her old look was stupid. She looked trashy. She looked ridiculous. I thought it was clown school when people were talking about she looked sexy. I thought she looked like a jackass. And if she would take the time to actually take some pride in how she presented herself and how she looked, it would help her significantly. Look what the fuck she did. She cleaned herself up, started taking her appearance to be much more important, and it shows. And the way she comes across now is vastly different. I wonder why. The Schleg Daddy says, clean up the look. Clean up the look, damn it! And then the second part, when it comes to Becky Lynch. Talking about last year. How stupid it was for the WWE to sit there and have Becky Lynch turn on Charlotte and think in any way, shape, or form that was going to result in some type of heel turn for Becky Lynch. That the fans were going to hate Becky Lynch. Even though everything that Becky Lynch was saying made sense. Everything that Becky Lynch said was fundamentally true from a character standpoint. As a result, the fans had more reasons to get behind her, more reasons to relate to her, more reasons to ultimately like her. And to try and present her as somebody that the fans should hate is stupid and will blow up in your face and you need to stop going against that. Well, lo and behold, what do you know? Eventually, the WWE realized, hey, we stumbled into it, as we so often do, but we got something here. Instead of trying to swim upstream, going against the grain, let's flow with the grain and see where the grain takes us, see where the current takes us, and maybe we could do some good business. And we stand here and now, and Becky Lynch is the man of WWE. And when you talk about in this particular moment, I don't know how many more interesting or compelling acts there are on their television between Raw and SmackDown than Becky Lynch. It's that simple. I'm happy for her. I'm proud of her. You take steps to get better, and you will end up being better. And to me, you look at this right now. Becky Lynch is going out there, and she's talking about being the man. The commentators are presenting her as the man. The company is presenting her as the man. And getting past the weirdness of calling the woman the man and all this and these gender-confusing times, the bigger thing is they are presenting her in a way that makes the fans view her in a certain way and in a certain light. And that's a good thing. You're presenting her in a way where the fans are supposed to care about her, that they're supposed to believe that she is a big deal. And right now, based off of the reaction she's getting and the interest level she has, she is a big deal. If she wasn't, you wouldn't be incorporating her with segments with Cena and so on and so forth. So you've gotten something that you've stumbled into. Now is the time to validate it, maximize it, and go with it as much as you can for as long as you can. Side note, one way you don't freaking do that, WWE, is during a Becky Lynch match, having stupid bitch, whoever the fuck from NXT, Lacey Evans, who doesn't mean shit right now, being shown backstage watching at that weird TV watching angle that you have everybody freaking do like morons when Becky Lynch is wrestling. No, 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 no. When you're presenting somebody as the man, you don't sit there and do that type of crap. This would have been like in his heyday, Austin or The Rock 
being in the ring, cutting a promo, drinking beer, or doing all types of crazy shit and running people down like The Rock did. You got Austin drinking beer and stunning people. And we sit there and we go fucking backstage and there's Sean Stasiak. What's he doing here? Sorry, Dr. Stasiak, but the comparison is somewhat valid here. Would you fucking done that? Of course not. You don't distract away from the marquee attraction. When you do that, and you do that enough, it makes the marquee attraction less marquee and less of an attraction. So stop doing that crap. You did it twice. That's stupid. And then the whole crap of AJ Styles running out when Becky and Oscar are having their thing. You're having Becky Lynch talk about being the man. You're talking about her being the man. And then AJ Styles just runs out, and it's like, oh, fuck Becky Lynch. Either one or two things should have happened. Either A, you don't send AJ Styles out there during that particular segment. You find a different one that doesn't fucking matter to do that. Or two, you have Becky Lynch grab the microphone and cuss, basically cuss out AJ Styles and say, this is a different time, a different place. I'm the man. Get out of my fucking spotlight. Ha! Anyways, back from that tangent. You have to validate what you're doing here with Becky Lynch. You can't just sit there and have her say it, present it as such, and then not actually follow through. And the only way to do that at this point is for Becky Lynch to main event WrestleMania. Look, it's going to happen one of these years. Women are going to main event WrestleMania. And a lot of us have known for up to a year now that it was going to be WrestleMania 35. The difference being, though, is there's actually a legitimate, valid case to be made that perhaps your most interesting story heading into WrestleMania 35 could revolve around women. So if that is the case, and especially when you look at some of the other matches you might be envisioning for WrestleMania 35, there's no real other headline type of show-stopping match or huge, massive special attraction out there that really feels like a WrestleMania main event. So on a variety of different levels, this is the perfect time, the perfect place, with the perfect character to do it. You have Becky Lynch talking about being the man. Well, what better way to establish yourself as the man than to main event the biggest show in professional wrestling of the fucking year? Especially when on the flip side of that, you've got the baddest woman in WWE, Ronda Rousey, who has mainstream appeal, mainstream credibility. She has star power. You could throw Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch into your main event of WrestleMania 35 and get the wrestling world buzzing and a lot of the mainstream media buzzing. Like, who in the fuck wouldn't want that? You want to validate Becky Lynch and you really want to make her a star? That's how you do it. Oh, and by the way, for those a-holes that surely are going to suggest this, one way you don't do that is by shoehorning Charlotte into this shit. She had her chance. She's stupid. She can't get over one-tenth of the way that Becky Lynch could organically, no matter how much the company tries to force her down her damn throat. The last thing you need to do is be distracting the way from Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania with Charlotte Flair's bullshit. Period. The main event of WrestleMania should be Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch and if anything, maybe champion versus champion. Raw Women's Champion versus SmackDown Women's Champion. Let's not overthink this. Charlotte, in the grand scheme of things right now, means nothing. And in no way, shape, or form should be involved with that. Because Becky Lynch is the vastly bigger deal. Ronda Rousey is the vastly bigger deal. And if anything, you're doing Charlotte a disservice along with those other two by throwing her into that situation. Because when you look at Charlotte, it will become painfully obvious how little she actually measures up to those two current state in WWE. This is not hard. And unless you get some miraculous comeback from his battle with the leukemia out of Roman Reigns and you have him win the Royal Rumble, and he maybe goes on to face Lesnar at WrestleMania again, maybe you would say that match might mean events. Maybe. Because I'm sorry. As much as you talk about Becky Lynch being the man, Roman Reigns literally coming back from cancer instantly makes him the number one babyface in the company. At least at WrestleMania, especially people really wanted that belt off of fucking Lesnar. That's the only thing. And even in that case, you got to have Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey go semi-main event. they got to go second to last. Other than that, what are you going to say? John Cena, Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship? That does not feel like a WrestleMania main event. 
to me, Becky Lynch or Ronda Rousey at this particular point in time feels much more like a WrestleMania main event than that match would be. So WWE has a very simple choice here. You can either continue to go with Becky Lynch and do the good things that you're doing and validate her and make a real star out of her while also elevating Ronda Rousey's profile in the process a little bit too. Or you can do things the way you normally want to do and have the women wrestle in the middle of the card, shoehorn Charlotte Flair in there, and screw all this shit the hell up. Make the decision, WWE. You listen to the Schleich Daddy, you can make them stars. You don't listen to me, and everybody will be cussing and fussing for years about how badly you fucked this up again.